Hello, Lee Residence, Melanie Cottage and Ben Lovelock have starred in an episode of Channel 4's Super Vet after their pet ferret Astrid broke her leg doing a war dance. The couple have uh, set up a GoFundMe page to help raise money to pay the £3,000 vet bill. They spoke to me to explain what's been going on. Hello Melanie, hello Ben. Hello. Your baby ferret who's had an accident, yes. broken a limb and has been on yes. Super Vet. You started rescuing ferrets 20 years ago. You were 17 at the time, is that right Melanie? It was about, no, so it was 15 years ago when we were 17 and oh. we decided um, to, yeah, we decided to get our first pet together. He was living at his mum's and I was living at my parents and we decided that a pet ferret would like suit us because they sleep quite a long time. They sleep up to 18 hours a day and obviously we were young so we didn't want too much commitment <laughs> and um, so we decided on a pet ferret. <laughs> Just out of interest, how long did ferret live for? They average between like seven and nine years. Okay. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So this here is actually go. she's here. Right. Can you see her? Yeah. Yeah. Perfectly. Looks brilliant. But Astrid, she she was um she was a gift from my husband last year. But that um, was a wedding anniversary gift, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. It was. Well, yes. It was actually because we've been together for twenty years. Um, at that point, that was, she was like my twenty um anniversary present yes it was our second uh, it was our second wedding anniversary because we got married on our anniversary you know oh, that's <laughs> lovely that's lovely um so what <laughs> happened to astrid how did she get hurt we've got we've got 16 ferrets all together and we um let them play out in our conservatory area and we've got two armchairs in there that we sit in there and we play with them and watch them play and stuff like that um and when they're excited they do um a thing called a war dance, so they bounce about basically, they like spring about. It's, they it's show funny their to watch, they're excited. Um, she was only three months old at the time and she managed to climb up onto the armchair. Um, and one of her, her sisters was up there at the time, so she got excited because she managed to get up there. She's done this little war dance and fell off the armchair awkwardly. Yeah, and that's how she um broke her. <laughs> Leg, yeah, yeah, you could see straight away that she was in pain because she was limping. So we found the vets, like local vets, um, immediately and they discovered that she had broken her tibia and they decided that, you know, it would have to be specialist surgery because she was so tiny. And um, so then we were, um, you know, um, referred to Noel Fitzpatrick. He is the, he is the super, the super yes. vet. He was the only man in the UK that could perform the surgery. So oh. we had to go and see him. How long ago was this? This was late last year that this happened. Um, was it, so like sept I think it was September yeah. last year. Right. Yes, yeah, so it was a terrible accident. It was a terrible time. Right. <laughs> Very so terrible. How yeah. long was it until you uh, sat with him having the operation done? Oh. the next day wasn't it mm, yeah immediately. so we took her to our vets uh literally straight away as it happened within an hour and they kept her in overnight they done x-rays kept her on medication and stuff like that and then they um asked other vets like specialists around and they was like that's nothing we can do and that's when they said we can refer you to Noel Fitzpatrick and we was there up there the next day basically right. which where I went up there and he done his own x-rays sorry where's he based uh Guildford oh I know yeah okay so that's about an hour and a half from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, leg. <laughs> which one? It's well, this little left one here. It was that you wouldn't ever be able to tell that anything had happened now. Yeah, right. it's She's... not. It's not slowing her down one bit. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little so while ago. She... You drove up to Guildford and arrived, yeah. and there was a TV crew there. Was so what? How did all the uh, television company get involved? um so we yeah so we drove straight up there we sat down with Noel and stuff like that and then he took her in to do his own x-rays and stuff like that so while we was waiting out in the car park that's when the producers came over to us and said this is like a really unique story because we've never had like ferrets come in with this sort of thing before we usually get dogs and cats sort of thing I was like would you mind if we film the process and stuff like that and we, we said yeah, I was I trying know. to get the nation to feel differently about ferrets because they get such a bad reputation and I think they make great pets. Yeah. They play just like a cat or dog would play. And um, 
they sleep a lot so they're good for when you're at work yeah. <laughs> you haven't got to worry <laughs> you look gorgeous so did did they yeah, interview well, she... you for the program what how did were you involved actually on screen at all yeah so we was in the view because we went up there a couple of different times and stuff like that obviously the first time we went up there and then we had some interviews then of like what happened and stuff like that um so we was and then we, the next time we went up there to pick her up uh we was interviewed again up there um so up there we was interviewed for about eight hours in total there yeah and then they came to our house as well on two different occasions and that was like different like four hours each session each, each time so when you watch the episode itself it's only for like a few minutes yeah, yeah it's like 20 minutes and you think like out of like that 16 hours that we recorded it literally just gets shrunk down so small and you've set up a gofundme page to pay yes well treatment. Yes. is that right how does that work melanie's self-employed so obviously with covid and everything like that she was told she couldn't work anymore and so i was still working so we only one income coming in at a time and because it was such specialist surgery it was it just swallowed up our, you know, our allowance that we have for the vet bill and and, and then some. It was just, you know, an, an expense that we couldn't really afford, but we had no option. Um, and we still haven't really managed to get ourselves back on our feet just yet. Um, I only started going back to work about um, April, two, wasn't it? Yeah, April time. So I thought I'd reach out to the ferret community <laughs> or the local community <laughs> to see if I could get any help because um, with the vet bill not being paid, I'm unable to, um, um, well, you know, it hinders the the vet the veterinary care of my other ferrets that I rescue and rehome. So to get that vet bill cleared would be um, amazing. Yeah. How many <laughs> yeah. ferrets over the years have you managed to rescue and rehome? Have you actually got an idea? Um, of what number? Well, we've had, yeah, we've had about 30 over the past 15 years, yeah. Yeah. So we've, um, and we, they've all lived to really good ages, you know, nine, ten years old. We've had them from babies. So we've managed to keep, keep them, you know, going. <laughs> so it sounds to me like you keep them all rather than um, you sort yeah. of. No, that's oh, yes. yeah. So, yeah, we if I get a phone call saying that someone found one in their garden. That's happened about four times, hasn't it? That, yeah. you know, we do try to find their owners, but I do believe that they were probably abandoned. That they're not in a very good state. And, you know, it takes time to rebuild their confidence. And, oh, she's really sleepy. <laughs> you know, it takes time and effort, you know, but I've loved every second of it. And so have you, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> so basically, when you keep ferrets, they, they're ideal to keep them in pairs. Um, so we've got a couple of these, um, and got, these are called Angora ferries. Yeah, ones. I only just recently got Angora because um, it, they were just a gift from my husband. Like I got, um, you know, she was a gift because she's such like a special breed, but usually they are standard ferrets, you know. Yeah, so we've got seven Angora ferrets that we've bought as, like, I thought Mel's like a wedding present and then the anniversary presents and stuff like that. But this is what before the accident. <laughs> for every Angora ferret, we, we go to... Um, Joe in Hockley, who has an actual ferret rescue, like she's got loads, like that. She's got hundreds of ferrets there. So if, for every one we buy, sort of thing, we go to her and we rehome. we rehome one of the rescues as well and bring them home. That's how we've ended up getting so many ferrets. <laughs> and we have rescued our own in the past. Yeah, 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 yeah. Joe, people who who? found them in their garden. She's called Joe Clark, and she owns the Hockley Ferret Rescue Centre in in hockley yeah in hockley okay right you're yeah. totally sold on them and you're saying that they make good pets yes Give me a pitch that i'm a parent i'm thinking about getting a, a pet for the family and you think i should get a ferret give me a quick pitch on why i should get a ferret rather than a cat or a dog can you do that well i think yeah, I think I can. Well, I do believe that ferrets make good pets for children that are a bit older, perhaps 13 plus, because they can they can nip when they're excited and they're playing, but it doesn't not necessarily bite, especially if they're handled well and they're they're well socialized. Mm. You know, they can they can behave like a cat or a dog would. They play like them too. Um, I do think they're quite they're so funny to watch. They're uh, mischievous, they're intelligent, they're sociable. And then they make such great, they sleep for 18 hours, up to 18 hours of the day, so you haven't got to worry about them if you've got to go to work. And, you know, children, they get bored quite easily, don't they? So they've only got to entertain them for about four to six hours every day, you know. And um, 
Yeah. <laughs> They're cute. Great. Well, I will put very the to page link in at the bottom of the video. Uh, okay, thank you. Hopefully thank people you. can see that. Then I've probably got enough. That's all good. Thank you. She's well sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I do love you. No, I think we're seeing it. Yeah, no, I think that's. I think that's it. When right, we just end end it nicely. <laughs> Maybe don't end it here. Did you need to say goodbye? Well, I will do in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was lovely to chat to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care.